This is why you bought your John Cooper Works convertible, is it not? To get your farmer's tan on. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, you guys. My name is Marcus. You guys already knew that. Here in front of me is the refreshed 2022 Mini Cooper John Cooper Works. Okay, this one we're driving today starts at, yes, $43,000 Canadian. Uh, as tested, it is $54,000 Canadian. On the exterior here, we've got a few different changes. This one specifically that we're driving this week uh, has been specced in this exclusive to the convertible zesty yellow. Okay, in some lights, it looks incredibly bright and yellow. And then in the shadows, it kind of has a hint of green that comes out too. Lots of attention, <laughs> lots of attention. And you can see here, uh, you get a few different changes uh, as far as the outgoing John Cooper Works goes. You get this kind of new, although it is not a real intake here, it covers up the actual front bumper here or the front bracing here uh, and just creates a more open look to the front. I mean, it is definitely more aggressive, the edges here. So let's get in, we'll go over the stats and most importantly, we're gonna see how it drives. Okay, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to the show. Today we're sitting here in the 2022 Refresh Mini Cooper JCW convertible in zesty yellow. Let's go for a drive. Minimal torque steer and a great package if, if you're willing to drop a pretty penny and you don't have any interest for one reason or another in the GTI or other competitors like the Veloster N. So here we have a mid-cycle refresh of the Cooper JCW. Now this is a step down from the GP. It does not have the option for that completely insane and just over the top wing that you can spec the GP with. It does come with a number of options that kind of make this a, a real driver's car. The first one I absolutely noticed was uh, the suspension. Now, JCWs, John Cooper Works, if you don't know, are targeted at the uh, hot hatch enthusiasts, are targeted at the drivers who want to squeeze a little bit more fun out of their Yes, daily commute and a car that can be taken on the back roads. Although the JCW, and especially in this zesty yellow, in my experience driving around over the past week or so in this car, uh, this is not a car for an introvert. 226 horsepower, 236 pound feet of torque out of the BMW 2 liter direct injection inline four. Wonderful turbo noises coming from the front there. And that is one of the benefits. If you're willing to drop the extra bucks on the convertible, which is new for the JCW, then what you get is a barrage of turbo sounds when you expect them. <laughs> and exhaust crackles out back when you do expect them and when you don't expect them. All right, you guys, unfortunately, no launch control on the Mini Cooper. Mainly, my guess is because uh, this JCW, the refresh, uh, does not have a dual clutch. It is not an eight-speed DCT. It's an eight-speed automatic transmission. That being said, it's pretty well tuned here. So, you know, it's a, a car that comes alive regardless of what speed you're traveling at. Now, peak torque is at 1,250 RPM. Wow, liftoff turn-in is incredibly real. I haven't driven a front-wheel drive car in a hot minute. Uh, but I can say this, jumping out of the, the Mini Cooper SE, the all-electric Mini Cooper S of this generation, while the center of gravity is technically lower in that vehicle, 
you you really feel the handling characteristics shine through in the JCW when compared to that car. The E rides a lot nicer. The eight speed's all right. You know, the reason why they went with the traditional eight speed as opposed to the DCT is effectively because it cannot handle too much torque. It's not that beefy of a DCT, right? Uh, which isn't a bad thing. This eight speed is absolutely still responsive. Uh, but the transmission's responsive. It's a lot better kind of mid-throttle, half-boost, cruising around town. The shifts are incredibly crisp and you actually don't feel the car become upset at all, like right there. You do not feel that shift in weight transfer through the suspension, but when you're closer to full throttle and you're right at the 6,500 RPM red line, there's still like, and this is just inherently coming from, going from a DCT to a traditional eight-speed uh, auto, is there's you still feel a little bit of a lurch like there it has kind of kick to it if you're not careful your head begins smacking up against these jcw seats which by the way oh, i have to fix the gopro which by the way uh i really enjoy these seats i love these seats the materials are great alcantara uh pretty much everywhere except on the side bolsters those are still cloth I find myself uh, a cloth guy, way more than a leather guy, and I'm not sure you can even spec uh, the JCW with leather seats. So that's the thing. And one of the things that I notice is they carried over this really large, thick steering wheel here, uh, which I like. I don't know, some people find a, you know, if a Mini's small, a Mini is playful, a Mini's cheery, it's supposed to be able to just toss it around, grab the wheel, oh, here's a corner, boom, steering input, kind of guess as you go, right? Uh, but in modern Minis, that's just not the case. So having a thick steering wheel like this to bring in more of the mature BMW feel is just the direction Mini has has decided to take here. I, I really enjoy it. It kind of makes the chassis feel you know, it makes you feel like you're piloting a more taut car and not just a flimsy hot hatch. I mean, 205s all around, 18s. Little chirp on shift up to third. I can appreciate that. <laughs> it handles brilliantly. I mean, it's glued to the road soaking up the small bumps magnificently. You feel every big divot in the road though. Now this one has been optioned with the optional adaptive dampers, uh, which do change slightly uh, from mid to sport. And actually steering changes up and throttle response changes up from uh, the mid setting drive mode to sport. I only ever appreciate top-down cars once I'm in them. When I'm looking at the weight sacrifice that the majority of, you know, as a general rule, that hardtops, uh, you know, it's weight savings that hardtops have over their convertible counterparts, I just can't get behind most convertibles, especially from a styling perspective. Uh, here in the Mini, it's a little bit different because there's nothing to like fix or change like there are in other coupes and exotics when it comes to the rear end styling portion of the car, top up versus top down. But every time I get into one of these, I'm like, wow, for a driver's car, and we're not talking like, you know, Nissan Murano Cabriolet aside, <laughs> just to have the ability to have the whole environment around you not only so that you can bring in the outdoor environment, hear the exhaust better, uh, appreciate the road you're driving on uh, and the destination you're heading to, but as well, I feel like people are just more inclined to start a conversation with you on the side of the road or make comments about the car. Like the other day I was here, oh my God, just dives right in, at White Rock Beach and uh, you know, people enjoy the car. They're, it's, they make lighthearted comments, mostly on the color, 
Uh, but this one lady literally blew a kiss at the car as she was leaving. And uh, she was like, oh, what is it? Is that like a, a Rover or something? I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> Mini Cooper. It's a John Cooper work. She's like, Mini who? She's like, I don't know, but I love it. Mwah. And she literally blew a kiss at the zesty yellow. So take that into your notes, Mini Cooper Canada, uh, as far as this, by the way, exclusive color to the convertible. You cannot get this color uh, on the coupe. You also cannot get the JCW convertible in a manual, in a six-speed manual. The good news is in the hardtop, which is obviously catered a little bit more towards your driving enthusiast, uh, the six-speed is actually available. I find myself short-shifting this car and utilizing more of the 236 pound-feet than the 226 horsepower. I mean, mainly for the turbo sounds. <laughs> Mechanical LSD with the JCW as well. It is a locking differential. Minimizes torque steer. There is still some torque steer. Hard to run away from that in a powerful, torquey turbo front wheel drive car. But it's something that's absolutely improved. I mean, the Mini E absolutely had more torque steer here. Uh, less torque, but because it's an EV, the torque is just a lot tougher to handle uh, and control. The new 8.8 inch infotainment digital screen here. So of course, uh, with this generation mini as before the facelift as well, uh, the big speedo is gone. Uh, but of course we still have this kind of colored wheel here. I kind of like that. So, you know, mini is still holding on to a lot of what makes their cars different but trying to integrate, integrate the modern age, bringing in things like a fully digital tacked on display here, a little Tic Tac looking thing on the dash here. Perfectly great. I actually really enjoy looking at this LCD screen. It's bright, uh, it's like got a matte finish on it. There's no reflections whatsoever because of course it's not like inset into the dash. <laughs> There's grip, but you know, you really got to trust the rear end. You really got to trust the rear end. It's one of those cars where you can trail brake into a corner uh, and basically just on tap, the rear end will just chase you around like that. But uh, especially with 205s, the limit is so small between, the line is so small between a balanced, lift, a balanced lifting off of the front brakes and having that rear rotate around and complete drift mode and lift off oversteer. Thanks guys for watching. This has been the 2022 Mini Cooper JCW. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're willing to put up with the stiff suspension, if you're willing to spend the money and also when you put the top down, if you're willing to give up your rear view mirror, I can't see anything. I mean, the trees are nice. <laughs> then I guess this could be a good option for you. And especially if you like Zesty L. But thanks guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, camera just died. Uh, <laughs> hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of our future videos coming up. Uh, and follow me on Instagram at Roads on Travel. You can see what cars we're driving uh, coming up here in the new near future. See you next time.